Okay. Good morning, everyone. The talk is going to be in English, so it's time to speak in English. My bad English. I would like to introduce you, Chimo Planes and Joan Puigserver, two former students for, uh, of this uh, school. They have been in Google, Chimo in uh, New York, and uh, Joan and Monta in Mountain View. And they, uh, they are going to talk about uh, their experience and the way that you could reach the same experience, if, if possible, to every one of you. Uh, the talk is going to be in English, but uh, uh, you got uh, the possibility to, uh, after the talk, uh, put different questions in the language that you prefer, English, Valencian, or Spanish, okay? So thanks to Chimo and Joan to be, for being here, and thank to all of you to, to be here. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, Jaros, remember to sign the attendance list. I'm going to pass it around. Hi. Well, this first slide was to introduce ourselves, so, but the introduction has already already done, so Chimo will... Uh, hi. Uh, first of all, I have to say that we are not related to Google. We are not Google employees. We are just students of this university. So uh, everything we say or, or the stupid things we are going to say so is, is our fault. It's not Google or the u university. So the first question is, uh, come in. Uh, what, uh, what is to be a Google intern? Oops, sorry. Uh, an internship is a period of time you spend usually in summer uh, going to work on a company. In our case, was Google last summer. When you are an intern at Google, you join a team like Gmail or Android or other teams, and you work there uh, with a host on a Google project. A host is an engineer, a Google engineer that guides you during the three months. It's like your leader there. Uh, and with your host, during the first week or two weeks, you decide what are you going to do during your internship. This is called a personal project. And then as you decide what project you are going to do, you have three months to complete. The typical projects are, I don't know, adding a new feature to a Google product or doing some other internal coding. And now Joan is going to tell you the, the benefits of being an intern at Google. So in case that you are thinking that you are there only to bring coffees to your boss or something like that, uh, that's not true. Interns are treated like full-time employees. You have all the, well, almost all the rights that any other full-time employee. And your salary is also comparable to, to the full-time employees. You are guaranteed to, to, to get at least 90% of the of a full-time employee in the same position as you. So that's really good because you are earning at least 90% of the salary of your boss. So it's cool. And you don't have to worry either for uh, other expense like apartment or things like that because at least last year interns also got an apartment from Google, so you don't have to pay anything because you eat in the offices and they pay for your bed too. So it's really cool. And for the flight to go to the office? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. So I was working in Mountain View. Mountain View are the main offices of Google. They are in Silicon Valley, close to San Francisco in California. These are the first buildings that uh, Google bought in the area. It's called the main campus, but I was not working this because there are many other buildings surrounding these four buildings and I was in one of those. But if you can see the umbrellas there, these umbrellas appear in a lot of videos or photos or things like that. There's was the main cafeteria is and the TGIF that we will explain later is hold there 
every week. So it's, I want to ask you a little question. Uh, do, does anyone know what's the Google's mission? What's the final purpose of the company? One, two, three, no, no. So Google's mission is to organize and the world's information and make it useful and universal, universally accessible. So universal, universally accessible basically means to access to it through internet, but we have a little problem here that is that not all information is on internet, so what can we do? And there's an obvious solution. Let's put everything on internet. But so in my case, I was working uh, inside Google Research, but I was working on Google Books product. So the goal here is to make the information in books universally and useful for everybody. So what's the approach that Google follows here to solve this problem? First, they get books from uh, editors or libraries. They have to sync agreements with them and all the stuff. Then they recognize the text on the books, and once this text is recognized, they just index the content like they do with web pages. So I was working on the OCR recognition. This is mean. This means optical character recognition, and this is what basically uh, we did. We get text from internet. We create like artificial books because for training these models that you can see here, you need samples of images of books and the transcriptions. But if you have to get the transcription, you need to pay somebody to write what is on the book. And in, instead of doing that, we got text from the internet and created our own books. So in that way, we had the images and the text, we add some noise and so on. Then some statical, uh, statistical uh, models are learned from those images and plus text. So we get a model that is able to predict which text is written in a given image. And once we have that, we just get the scans of the book and recognize the text and voila, that's Google Books. Additionally, with the recon, uh, recognized text on the real books, you can use that data to train and improve your model. So, but that is basically how Google Books works. And I was working in some of the internal parts of the static, uh, statist sorry, uh, statistical modeling. So it's machine learning and that kind of stuff. The ones that are seeing uh, intelligent systems, I think that is the course in the new, new grade, you will be familiar with those methods, more or less. Okay, that's my turn. I was working at Google New York. This is typical picture of New York, the river, the bridge. And the project I was working on was part of Google Now. Google Now is an Android application in Jelly Bean. And I think it's related to Google's mission because the the goal of uh, Google now is to get all the information you have on all Google products and then combine and process it to give you the information you need uh, in in the moment you are. For example, if you if you have an appointment in uh, in your calendar to go to the cinema at five, it can get for you the, the best route to go to the cinema according to the traffic information and then remind you some minutes before that you have to leave if you are that you are going to be late. It has a lot of information related to where you are or what are you doing. If you are at, at home, it shows you the best way to go to work. If it's in the morning, it says, oh, this road is very crowded. Just go for this other road. Or if you are at work, it says how to ride home. The bus stations, all the, the metro lines, has all the information. And also you can uh, ask questions using this box on top. You can 
if you want to know who is the wife of the Prince of Spain, you can just say to hey Google who is the wife of the Prince of Spain and it gets understands what have you said and it returns you the result. You can ask a lot of questions about famous people, uh, places, information about countries, a lot of information. Also you can uh, give orders to your Android device. Uh, this is the part when I was working, voice action. You can give an order to the device and it tries to understand what you said and then complete this order. For example, show me the closest police station. It opens Google Maps. Or show me the weather in New York. It will give you the, the weather widget with the, all the information. And in, there are some other useful actions like if you are speaking to a Japanese and you need to give him some important information, you can just say, hey, Google, translate this for me. And it will translate and say it to the, to the other guy. Uh, you can also set alarms or play music, uh, open applications. There are a lot of, I, I don't know all the actions there are in the system. So this is the part I was working on, uh, these voice actions. and. I think it's related to all these things, to the, to the goal of Google, that provides information, but not the information of all the books, just your private information for you. So you might be wondering how, how is life at Google? Well, of course, it's like other life in other big corporations. You have to work from 9 in the morning to 7 in the afternoon. You have only 30 minutes for lunch. You have to... I wear suit and tie every day at work and do not repeat the same tie twice in a week because that's not good. And, of course, the office is only for work. Just work there. This is obviously a joke. Uh, we can, at Google, we can choose when we, would, we, we work. We have a lot of freedom to go outside to relax or we have a lot of activities like massage and at Google and yeah. yeah the massage are really good I got one and they were nice about the food you have uh, three paid meals uh, I mean you have breakfast uh, lunch and dinner for free for all employees in Mountain View, the, where I was, you have 17 cafeterias where you can choose every day. Usually you choose the, the one in your building, but you can go uh, wherever you want. And each cafeteria has its own style. One is for Latino food, the other is Japanese, uh, Occidental, or so on. So you can try different foods each day of the week. And in case in the middle of the day you feel thirsty or hungry, you can go to one of the multiple mini kitchens in your building and just get some snacks or, or soda to, to drink. Uh, about the dress code, you don't have to wear a tie. So uh, you can even bring your dogs to, to work and they can stay there. Uh, in this picture, there are... Uh, Sergey Brin is one of the creators of Google. And, and also Peter Norvig is the director of research. They don't wear suits that much. Uh, Peter Norvig in this picture is speaking at TGIF. TGIF, do you know what it means? It's, thanks God, it's Friday. It's an event that is held every Friday after the work. And it's a very funny event where all the Google employees can ask whatever they want to the to Sergey Brin or or all the top people in Google and they got the answers. Uh, I never went because it's usually in in Montami, but we can see at every Google office online. Mm -hmm. this, I think you this, went several yeah, times. I, I, I went several times. This TGIF is on these buildings that I showed you in my picture and it's Crowded, you have to go like 20 minutes before it starts because all the Googles, all the Googlers want to be there. And it's pretty funny because uh, usually these 
Sergey Brin and Larry Page are very funny guys. And the cool thing is that you can ask whatever you want to them, even not politically correct questions to them, and they will always answer. Because it, this is close to the company, so no, everything can be said freely, open. Uh, Google is pretty open inside Google. So, OK, yeah. fine at the office. Uh, there's, those are pictures of New York I take last summer. Uh, we had a lot of bases to have fun there. If you are bored of programming, you can go. Uh, for example, I, I am in, in this picture playing some video games with friends. And we also had uh, this huge Google Earth uh, machines that you can go there and it's like you are flying. And then at Mountain View? What yeah, mean? Mountain View is basically the same. You have arcade machines, you have room with this, uh, I don't know the name, this, you know, this uh, Wii games that you have the guitar and the battery and the drum, sorry, and all that stuff. Uh, we also have this kind of flight simula simulator. And yes, we have also, you have also gyms, or pools, and a lot of stuff to, to relax and get fun in the office. And Google's, Googlers are also big fans of Lego. This is in New York. You have a room to play Lego if you are stuck in some problem while coding. And this, this picture in the left bottom corner is the first Google server. This was built by, by Larry Page, I think, in the last 90s. And this is in the uh, Computer History Museum. This museum is in Mountain View, very close to Google, and they they gave the the server to the museum. So you have Legos too. No, activities. <laughs> ah, yeah. uh, almost every week we had some sort of group activities organized by the company. So during the summer we went to do kayaking at the river or to the zoo, even a, a boat trip party and some other stuff. It's, it was, it was fun. And Mountain View side? Mountain View is basically the same. Uh, they organize all a bunch of activities each week, for mainly for the interns. Uh, they paid a uh, baseball ticket for not all the interns, because you have to sign in, but for many interns. And we also got this uh, boat dinner. They, they rented a, a boat. Three, 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 eight, uh, boat, and it was pretty funny because they were all the interns, which in Mountain View was around one thousand interns, and also most of their uh, hosts. And we had a disco, a karaoke, and a casino for free. The casino, not don't gam gambling. And we were supposed to wear in the 70s, but like you can see in the picture there in the top, there's always some geek who wears from, like in the Star Wars, and this is, of course, this is Google. It must be geeks there. And we also had concerts in the, in the, in the offices, because this concert there was well, it was indie music, which I personally like. I don't know you, but I like it. And there was a concert in San Francisco. Not a concert, this kind of festivals that last like three days. And the day before it started, some bands came to Google and played there. So it's really cool. So maybe you are wondering, after seeing all these pictures, if they actually work something there or we just were having fun. So the, the answer is that really we were working there. Uh, interns has, have to complete their personal projects in the three months. This usually means that they have to write, write code to the, for the Google system. And the process, is, the process of adding code is pretty slow, but it's also very secure. So first you have to write the code and some test cases for everything. And then you submit to the 
to the system, uh, then some people have to review, maybe your teammates or the owner of the code you are modifying, has to review the code and approve it. Sometimes you even need to more than one approval before you can put your code inside Google. If, they, if it is accepted, your code is then part of Google. It will be used in maybe two weeks after you submit it. But usually, you have a lot of comments. You did something wrong. You need to write more comments. You need to write more tests. So it's pretty slow because maybe you write a code in one day, and then during two weeks, you are getting comments. And several weeks later, you can finally submit your code. Yeah. Hey, we have two advices to give you that we learned <laughs> that. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the test-driven development. You are supposed to follow that paradigm at Google. That means write a test for each piece of code that you are writing and make sure that it works as expected for any possible input. So, yeah, and according to that paradigm, you are supposed to write the test before the actual code. So uh, this is just to make sure that you don't break anything when uploading to to your code to to Google. So, yes. uh, well, maybe we should not try to do the work that has been done before. So before implementing something, we need to actually check if somebody did this work before. This implies that you can, you need to search in the Google code to get, I don't know, examples of function or the actual function that you want to implement, maybe it's there. For example, if Joan wants to do some processing of dates and times at Google Books, uh, he can go to maybe Google Calendar and I suppose that all possible functions that deal with dates and times are there. So he can check there and use this code. And okay, Google is a, was a, started as a search company, so we have a lot of uh, applications to, ch to, to search the source code. And this one is public, code search, that you can try. And there you can put, for example, I don't know, uh, an algorithm you want to implement and see if somebody has implemented this in, in open source. And it's pretty nice. So, what can you do to, to apply for being a Google intern? Just first, go to jobs.google.com and look for internship positions. You will have to upload your resume and some background information, like what are you studying and what's your uh, average grade and things like that. They do a filtering process there, and if you're lucky, you will get uh, contacted by some recruiter, which will settle up to six interviews, but in my case was only four, with uh, Google employees. So you have to pass, pass all those up to six interviews, and these are called technical in interviews. And once you pass these interviews, you will enter to a pool of of uh, potential interns, and then the host uh, can look all the potential interns and choose the one that better fits to its project. If you get an offer from your host, then you only have to sign the contract, do your visa paperwork, that is, you don't have to do so much with the visa, but you have to go to the United States Embassy and so on. And finally, just fly to, to, to your Google office. Okay. I, I'm going to explain the resume because the, I failed at every rule I wrote in this <laughs> slide. Uh, first of all, the resume is not the curriculum that we use here. It's just one or two pages saying the most important things about you. You just need to put your name and email as for personal personal data, you no age, no gender, no picture. I put everything of this in, in my 
I send the, the curriculum with all this information. And I don't know how I went invited to join Google. You are supposed not to write this because the, 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 the laws in the United States are very strict about this and if you are rejected you could you could argue that they have discriminated you because of your uh, race or things like that so don't put that in your resume and of course write in English <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, don't put information that can lead to discrimination or something maybe you can put where are you living in, you are living in Spain but not nationality or this information if they want your gender, they need to infer from your name. <laughs> Don't even put this. Uh, then, when filling your resume, you need to put the, the most important things of your life. Maybe your studies and the last place you work. Just write the primary languages you know a lot, not every primary language you use in the university. Uh, this is the only rule I... I did correctly. I just put C and Python. It's because everything you put in your resume, they can ask you uh, in, during the interviews. So you put a lot of languages, you are exposed to get asked about some language that you are not expert. And final advice is have a personal project, uh, maybe a game, uh, a page that does something, some program, because they are very happy to hear about these personal projects yeah. during the interviews. In my, in my case, all the interviews ended with talki talking about some personal project. They, they always ask, do you have some personal project or do you contribute to some open source project, things like that? So they are happy that you can explain every detail of the project that you like. So it's better if you have a personal project. So, yeah. so the process is that uh, of these interviews is that, well, in general, you have to prove that you know uh, basic computer science. So be ready with the algorithms and data structures, with the big O notation. You have to arc about the uh, running times of algorithms and things like that. And, some people is uh, often asked about uh, about uh, desing patterns and things like that. So, first of all, basic uh, computer science stuff. And apart from this basic computer stuff and the st stuff that you need for your uh, specific project, Everything related to how Google works will be explained in the first two weeks, so you don't have to worry about, oh man, I don't know how the distributed network of Google works, don't worry about that, because if you need it, uh, they will explain it to you. Like security matters and things like that, it's everything explained the first weeks. Yeah, also work. every application that Google uses, like compilers or even the, op the operating system is made by Google, so you are not supposed to know before arriving there how to use it. So they, you are, during the first week you will have lots of classes for everything. Yeah, don't worry about that. Just focus on computer science, basic, basic computer science. So how, how is an interview? Uh, I had three interviews, three technical interviews with them. Uh, first you receive a call from a Google engineer Mm, usually the recruiter tells you two or three weeks before the day wh when is the call and then during the interview you have one hour to solve as much questions as you can. I think the the best interview is how solve three so you don't have to do everything perfect. You, you need to write c code, not pseudocode, just maybe C, C code or Python code and Google Docs. They, put you a problem and you write them the code to solve this problem. You don't have to write the code perfectly. They, If you have a bug, they usually tell you. And they want to evaluate how you think about the problem, the approach you take, and, and all this stuff. And this kind of interviews obviously need a lot of preparation, so they 
advise you three weeks before the interview. Yeah. And how, how can you prepare? You know, first of all, like you will be asked about basic, basic computer science and algorithms and data structures. Prepare about that. So review your notes of programming courses, data structures, things like that. Try to participate in programming contests because usually the problems that they will ask to solve in the interviews are not very difficult. But if you solve difficult problems, you have more chances to succeed in the interviews. So try, uh, try to participate in more complicated problems. And try to know, uh, maybe, I mean, as we said before, you don't need to know a lot of languages, but it's best if you know one very well. And don't overestimate your resume, because that sometimes happened that you, you maybe you had a course in the university where you studied Python and you say, oh, I'm master in the universe of Python. Don't do that, because the creator of Python was working at Google since one month ago, so maybe he's your interviewer. So it's better to know a programming language really well. And if you apply for a specific role, be prepared about that, that topics. For example, in my case, it was about pattern recognition. So I had to review uh, the notes of these related subjects and of the related courses with pattern recognition, of course. If you work in computer graphics, review uh, algorithms and things related to computer graphics. Yeah, about the courses that you can take, I think in this university the most interesting course for this is this, I don't know what is in English, this programming contest course. In the degree, it should be optional, I think, in fourth course. But if you are really interested in doing this kind of interview, if somebody asks you for what course do you want, so remember to say I want to this course, and now? Yeah, so what happens if you are rejected? Uh, the first time that I applied for, for Google was in 2010, in September, October 2010, and I passed all the technical interviews, but when this project matching started, uh, looking for a host, I couldn't find a project related to pattern recognition, and I wanted to work in that. After some projects related to pattern recognition, I didn't like to the host then, and they started to offer me like uh, web programming applications, and I didn't like that. So I said my recruiter that I will, I would try next year. So don't worry to fail the interviews because you can try next year. So, yeah, don't worry if you fail. Uh, they receive like three million uh, resumes each year and like only 0.1% of all the uh, candidates are accepted. And it doesn't mean that you are not good because they have a really a strong filter to make sure that all the ones that pass the filter are good. But that doesn't mean that not oh, the opposite, yeah. <laughs> so okay. don't worry about that. Also, you can try in, a, in another company. Uh, what we have been talking here is about Google, but almost every big company has the same internship program. So you can, okay, I recommend you apply for all of them at the same time. You can, you can practice more interviews, having an interview with Microsoft, Yahoo, Facebook, IBM. Uh, I know a guy of this university that ha went to Microsoft three years as an intern and then uh, got hired. And yeah, if you want to maximize your the probability to get an internship, you can you should apply to all of them. In my case, I I had interviews with Facebook and Google, but then I got the offer from Google and I forgot about about Facebook. 
that's why the, this talk is not called our experience as Facebook in terms. <laughs> and this thing about the programming con contest, these companies are very interested in top programmers. For example, I, I got, uh, I was contacted by Facebook after participating in a programming contest, but I just got the offer from Google first, so I went to Google. But if you send resumes to all these companies or you participate in programming contests, your chances are increased. Yeah, and now you have heard our vision and of what is an internship at Google, and now we, are, we want to show you the Hollywood version of an internship. This, this trailer was released yesterday, and this movie was uh, shot at Mountain View this summer. I was there, but, well, you'll see now. I defy you to crush this course and not get psyched out of your mind. I'm gonna pump some tags. We got $20 in my pocket. The Chrono Shock 13. They didn't tell you then that. Your company is closed. You closed the company? Everything's computerized now. People have a deep mistrust of machines. Have you seen Terminator? Yeah. Or two? Mm -hmm. Or three? Or four? All of them. Vic, I got it. Google. You got us a job at Google? Not a job job. It's an interview for an internship that could lead to a job. Uh, Nick, this might be the last chance that we got. Come oh, in here. You got to come in closer. Yeah. They won't be able to no, see us. See how small the webcam is? No, kitchen, you see you. We can see you guys. Okay, good. Great. You got it. Hi, my name is Billy. We can hear you fine as well. Oh, great. Are you ready for this? Welcome to Google. This will not be your average internship. We're looking at some sort of mental hunger games against a bunch of genius kids for just like a handful of jobs. That's a Sharpie, by the way, genius. That's my fault. Hey, yo, it's time to get the part. I'm Lyle, one of the team managers. Pound me. Oh, normally just putting the, the fist out without the words is all that's necessary. Come on, bro. Fist me. Get up in there. Yeah, that's definitely not right. <laughs> Your interns? Yeah. Shout out. Deal with it. You're so old, though. I thought you were important. Sometimes the long shots pay off the biggest. Our team's a joke. You guys got to start believing. This reminds me of a little girl from a steel town who had the dream to dance. She had to strip down to nothing. She had to sit in that chair and arch her back, and she reached up and pulled the chain to nowhere and doused herself with water. Flash dance? We're talking about the movie from the 80s. Yeah, you're damn right I am. Oh, boy. Take me down to the paradise. We have rules. The red paddle indicates no. Green paddle, yes. Having a beer with your boss. If you want to grab a cold one with me, you let me know. I will not be grabbing a cold one with you. You get high? Your job? Find the bug. Why don't the two of you guys right now go and find the programmer? His name is Charles Xavier. He's a professor at Stanford. He's in a wheelchair. Got it. Stanford wheelchair. Yes. Charles Xavier? Very funny. Professor Xavier, we know that it's you. You found me out. Cyclops, Rogue, we're all here. Now, I want to share some of my wisdom with you. Oh, my God! <laughs> Professor Xavier's a total... Well, that's yeah. the Hollywood vision of an internship at Google. Yeah. Go to the slides. And, yeah, that's basically all our talk. Mm, if you have questions, we have a mic here. Oh, no. Where is it? They asked to us to give you the mic in case you want to ask anything, because the talk is recorded. Well, thanks very much for for the talk. Any questions? Hola. Eh, a ver, como habéis dicho, eh, los filtros son muy estrictos y conseguir entrar en, una, en un internship de Google es muy difícil porque hay millones de, de personas que cada verano, bueno, cada verano, cada principio de año, ni a la solicitud para ese verano eh, ir al internship. Entonces, mi pregunta era, eh, si nos importa decirlo, ¿qué nota sobre cuatro teníais cuando hicisteis la solicitud? ¿Por qué? Ese es el, pri el primer filtro que hacen sí. de cara a descartar el bueno, 80%. Eh, el primer filtro es que tengas algo interesante en no, el claro. currículo. Pero yo, en verdad, yo no creo que tengo siete con algo. No tengo mucho. O sea, no, no, es solo, no es solo la nota. Es la nota y lo que has hecho. Evidentemente, si no, pones, si no has hecho nada, van a mirar la nota solo. 
pero si no tienes si tienes una nota en media y has hecho proyectos por tu cuenta y tal, te van a tener en cuenta igualmente. Sí, tiene que haber algo que resalte en el currículum. Y también quiero decir que después de esta película que saldrá en verano, pues seguramente el año que viene tendrá muchas más solicitudes. <risa> será la moda eh, vosotros que han, aparte de lo que de, de lo que es la universidad qué habéis hecho porque pues, si sí, tenías algún proyecto pero en concreto qué es lo que cada uno habíais hecho yo no tenía nada solo es que pues he participado bueno, en competiciones de programación y había quedado pues en, tampoco ganador pero por la mitad tirando para abajo <risa> Pero al menos ya, o sea, la, solo el hecho de ya participar ya lo valoran bastante positivamente. En mi caso yo sí que tenía proyectos personales, pero eran, o sea, no te crees tú que era nada. Simplemente un proyecto que recuerdo que empecé en programación en primero, porque yo soy de plan antiguo. Bueno, era el número de Bacon, sabéis lo que es, ¿no? Esto de a qué distancia estás de otra persona, ¿vale? Y con esa tontería pues yo empecé a liarme y a hacer más extensiones y eso lo pones ahí en tu currículum y después te preguntan sobre eso y si les contestas bien y tal y te hacen preguntas pues ¿cómo has resuelto esto? ¿cómo has resuelto lo otro? Y tal. el tema es que ellos vean que tú estás motivado y que te gusta la informática ¿vale? Buenas yo quería saber exactamente el código de, de vestimiento, porque tú habías dicho que corbata y... El no, eso no, era una no, broma. No, exactamente broma. cómo ha quedado, cómo ha quedado. Exacto, eso era una broma. Eso era una broma, toda la transparencia era mentira. Para que veas, yo he visto gente de, sin zapatos por mi oficina. O sea, increíble. I don't know if you have told you before, how long is the internship? It's... In my case, it was 14 weeks. That's the maximum for uh, non-United States citizens. If you are citizen of the United States, you can be more. But I think that the minimum is one month. But you don't want to go just one month there. <laughs> yeah, it's between three months and three yeah. months and a half usually. And can you go? Can you apply again? I think that you can apply. They have positions for summer and for winter. Well, it's called fall, but summer and fall. And the the process starts for summer. The process starts in October, something like that. But I think that you can apply. Uh, you can still apply. And if not, you can apply for winter. So we can still apply to, for the summer? I'm not sure, but I think so. I asked that if we can still apply to the to the summer to the internship. I'm not sure, but just go to jobs.google.com. You have a smartphone; you can check and answer your partner. <laughs> okay, hello. Uh, we have spoken all about development and code programming and all the stuff. But is there an internship in Google connected to research, like it can be in a Uh, university environment, something like that? We, we both were working in, inside Google research. So yeah, but every work at Google involves some yeah. sort of program. I mean, at Google, the research and the uh, development of that research is very strongly connected because you are a company, you want to make your stakeholders happy. And But of course, there are research positions and the research at Google was... Is Really good. Thank you. Well, there is even intensive for cooks and for sales and other stuff, lawyers. But I think everybody here is interested in computer science internship. Yeah. Uh, hello. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys if when you uh, actually applied for Google, Did you feel prepared with all the uh, training that you received from uh, from the school? Did you feel that uh, you know that you would have difficulties uh, developing things for Google, or did you think that well, did you find that it wasn't actually that difficult as you had expected in the beginning? When I applied, I thought that I won't be invited to the Google internship, but then after the in the interviews, 
I more or less solved the problems they they put. And then when I arrived Google, I don't have much experience with other companies, but I think at the end all the companies do the same. If you are programming and you want to program as fast as you as you can and as better as you can also. Mm. The, I don't know if working at Google you have more resources, but I don't know if it's more difficult than for other companies. For example, in my case, I was afraid when I just applied, of course, and I said that they are not going to call me, but I got an email just the day after sending my resume. And a few weeks later, they said, you have an interview in two weeks. And I just started like, uh, reviewing all the notes from the course and things like that, and they said, man, I'm not going to pass. But I was asked only once for one question that I didn't study uh, in the university. It was some question about some weird tree structure, which I didn't study here. But all the other questions, I studied the, the, these algorithms or data structures here. So I think that we are quite good prepared. That doesn't mean that if you apply, maybe you are unlucky and you get some question very difficult, but in my case, I felt good prepared after the interviews. In the beginning, you are always thinking the, the worst. But yeah, and yeah, ah, well, once you are there, of course, in my case, I was working on Google research and I, I was an undergraduate, uh, I was a still undergraduate, and all of the other guys are uh, were studying uh, PhDs at the Stanford or MIT or things like that. So you get, oh man, they are going to fire me the, the first week. But no, because everybody is really nice. If you don't know something, you just have to ask. And of course, you are a student and they know what is your background. So if they hire you, you don't have to be afraid because they know exactly who you are. And then when you were actually working for them, uh, did you feel that what you were doing was out of your reach or, or you found it to be, you know, uh, you know an all right difficulty? Personally, I enjoyed like a little boy. Uh, and yeah, I said, maybe the first two weeks is a bit over overwhelming because you have to get introduced, not about your... Uh, personal work, but how the internal things works. But once you pass that, it's very smooth. Yeah, but there are, you have a lot of help there. There are even once a week you have office hours with experts of, I don't know, statistics, programming in C, uh, databases, that you can go there and ask the question you have, and you get some help. And you have technical courses too? For example, if you don't know how to handle uh, the control versus system, they have technical sessions where they teach you that kind of things. So, so they help you out in the yes. way. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I want to know a little bit more about the problems of the they, they propose to you in the phone sessions because. I think they'll be a little bit algorithmic or something like that, or I don't know exactly which kind of problem you, they propose to you. So can you give me an example, please? Or uh, I think all the questions I got were algorithmic, except one that was about uh, classes and this. Yeah, uh, for me the same. It was basically... Uh, which algorithm did you use to solve blah 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 or which data structure will you use to solve this problem or what is the cost of inserting an element to a binary tree or things like that and yeah it also depends on the position that you apply we are always talking about software engineering intern. if you apply to a different position like for example site reliability which is the guys that take care of all the services are uh, are working. 
So you may be asked about networks questions and operating systems and things like that. But for software engineering, it's basically algorithms, data structures, and some friends that were working with me, they told me that they were asked about the sync patterns. But it wasn't my case. Questions. I want to. Well, thank just one, you again. one thing. When you finish your inter sorry, when you finish your internship, the, your personal project is evaluated, and oh, yeah. if then some people of your team is asked about how did you perform in the internship, and if you are approved, you can get another internship or maybe some more interview for getting a job there. For example, if if. Is your last year in the university and you do the internship. After your internship, if everything goes well, which I suppose because you are good, uh, you, can, you can take two interviews to get a full-time offer. And if you are not in your last year and everything goes good, uh, you will probably receive an offer for the next year if you are interested. So yeah, the last advice is just keep calm and try it. <laughs> <laughs>